cook stack ku the gelt cook be te stack ke te temi ku you hua minda wa wayat te stem na elia na temi you hua minda ra galmu ra temes mes kran ra spip uya ra sash kwa es ra stichlens ku knu wanda ku as yal yots ku Cook stack ku to get the cook be to stack ke te to me or te or why it to stem. I was born and raised in Windermere and have lived on this river and the Lake Windermere all my life. I didn't realize that uh, we had salmon here in this in this river. And you know they were like huge salmon, and it would feed a whole family. And it was revolved around our culture. Uh, you know that's what we would uh, eat, and there was ceremony around it, and all those things that we lost. This is what we have today: is uh, this beautiful river that's flowing, but we don't have the salmon. It's a tragedy, really, what's happened. We used to be able to walk across the backs of the salmon across here, the old people used to say. Or it'd be so thick, you would, all you would see is bread. It'd be, you'd think it was blood red, but it's the fish. Those salmon used to come right up this river, right, right up to the top there. Obviously the salmon coming up once a year, they would all come together and they would sit at this area and wait for them. And I guess in the evenings or something, it's when they would come up and they would all head to the water. They'd have spears, I guess, and weirs, and who knows. But there's nothing left up there. Found one. That's a nice one. Uh, that's a very um, important spot for uh, us as, as Shishwap Indian Band uh, because of the uh, well, obviously it was a harvesting site, but it was one of our harvesting sites that we know um, was communal with uh, not only ourselves, but we, we uh, fished there with the Tanaka people as well. The salmon, you know, they were quite big and the Shushwap people lived on them, used them as their staple food. It must have been devastating for them to lose it after that. I can imagine one year not having salmon, whether it's Chinook, Sockeye, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine how they felt, you know, that, that year that nothing came. So Grand Coulee was the nail in the coffin for the most part, right? 1930s, when they put the Grand Coulee in, that was what stopped all the salmon from coming into Canada. Well, since then, we have, uh, you know, we've had more dams built. So there's uh, numerous dams on the U.S. as well as the Canadian side of uh, the borders that uh, hinder, if not completely stop, fish from go going through. Who gave permission? Who was consulted? So many dams. I don't know how many dams in that river. When they built a Mike Dam there, they never even consulted with their people. And, uh, you know, they just simply went ahead and done it without, without any consultation, huh? They never thought what um, creating these dams without any fish pastures would do to them. They not only lost the, the access to the resources, but they lost access through the Indian Act 
to their Quasaltan, to their relatives in the rest of the territory, because they were restricted, their movements were restricted to being on the reserve. So the things that they lost that they're still trying to revive today and revitalize today are, are the salmon ceremony, uh, the songs and, and the laws. They uh, lost all our salmon in 1941 or somewhere in there. They put the last salmon out when they closed the gates of the uh, Mica Dam and they built it with dams without fish ladders. The last one that was caught was in about 1945 and it was four feet. It was huge and it was actually caught in Briscoe. The salmon were a gift to us. The salmon were gifted to us to uh, help us feed ourselves. We not only need to have respect for the salmon, but we need to have respect for everything else. When they were uh, building that dam there, they, they knew that they were taking away our lifestyle. So uh, to compensate us, they, uh, they started issuing the, uh, our band's uh, spam in exchange for salmon. For the loss of the salmon, the government was giving our native people spam. And I remember growing up with, with that. Without salmon in our diets, we're, we're, we're looking at a lot of health concerns. Our lives, our way of life, our, our ability to you know, heal ourselves spiritually while we're fishing, because we're, we're, we're not there just to fish, we're there to be a, a, a community. A community, of a healthy, thinking, functioning community that relies on coming together to access salmon. So it's a, a traditional food that we use all year round. You know, very, very important. You know, to subsidize our omega threes and all those oils. You know, uh, to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So, yeah, salmon's it's not only a, a spiritual thing. You know, it's a, a need that our body needs all year round. Right? Is that uh, those oils? Right. In the loss of uh, salmon skeleton in the Columbia River system, you know, um, has created a lot of hardship with our people because they didn't have the food. That was the main source of food. You know, they, um, some of them starved. You know, our people starved because they didn't have that salmon. My uh, mom had to go to jail because she killed a couple of cattle to feed us. Where the Kinbasket Lake sits now was, uh, was a, a really rich uh, gathering area for us. We had done a lot of our gathering there for uh, right from uh, uh, cedar root gathering, salmon fishing, berry picking, uh, hunting. You know, we had um, colonization and we had mission schools. They took away our salmon. Those are all genocidal type of impacts. It's kind of sad, you know, we lost our language here. The last person that spoke the Kinbasket dialect passed away a couple of years ago. And that was the last speaker of the Kinbasket language. There's words that are only used when you're fishing. If you aren't fishing, those words are gone. I don't know those words because they're, they're gone. You gotta be able to fit in with Mother Nature and, and be part of it. A healthy ecosystem is exactly that. It's a healthy environment that you can go to and you can be healthy.
there was a spawning ground here back in the day for salmon and I think that's what that weir was used for. When your rivers run red and salmon, right, it was a lot easier to feed your families. So I don't think they they could right the wrong, you know what I mean? But you got to start somewhere and I believe that getting the salmon back in our water is a step in the right direction. Today, there are ceremonies on the Columbia praying for that salmon to return. Every year there's a, there's a ceremony that goes on. It's prayers and, and hope that, you know, one day that that salmon will be brought back into that river system. The Columbia River Treaty is a transboundary water agreement um, between Canada and U.S. This time the First Nations, the Tanaha, the Okanagan uh, and the Sequaquemec got together and said that they wanted to be sitting at the table to be a part of these negotiations. It's been a couple years in the renegotiation process so within that we have we're including our cultural values in there, ecosystem studies that we're all, we're, all three nations are being involved in. How do you repair the damage that's been done to our traditional ways and our ceremonies and our own Indigenous laws? How do we repair that? How do we revitalize that? That's something that needs to be addressed in the renewal of this treaty for the Columbia River Dam. That's a piece that has to happen there. It needs to be a cultural revitalization component to it. Well, we all uh, use salmon as our main staple to live a long time ago. So now would be a good time to get together and fight for a good cause, get the salmon back. There's no one that knows this river better than Indigenous people. And so, you know, it isn't for BC to make those decisions or Canada to make those decisions. It's a joint decision with the nations that live along this river as well. I think it's about time that we started um, really working together to make this a better place and to give back the culture to the, to the Indigenous people that were here to begin with. The Columbia River Salmon Reintroduction Initiative. It's a three-year initiative, um, Indigenous-led, how to reintroduce salmon into the Columbia River Basin. It's the five governments, so Tanaha, Okanagan, uh, and the Swekmik, and BC, and uh, Canada. So we're all sitting at the table now to discuss options and ways on how to get the salmon back into the Columbia. As that group, we look at the feasibility and the opportunity to restore salmon back in Columbia River. Because we can't just start dumping salmon into the river, expecting it to be miraculously saved and restored. We have to do our due diligence in terms of uh, protecting what's here now, right? Our resident fish stocks are very important still. Um, we do not want to harm them. Those salmon have a spiritual connection to where their ancestors, be it 80 years ago, would go to try and swim through and spawn, but now it's blocked, so those salmon are still coming, trying to get through, their, their, their spirits want to be home. And just like a salmon's always trying to get back to its home, it's spiritually connected to its home, where their ancestors are from, kind of like us. They are born here, they die here in Sohap Mulu. So for us, it's about looking after where they're born and where they die, and it's a part of our culture. We have a responsibility as uh, caretakers of the land, and so that's what it's about, but also caretaking the water, because it really is the water, water is life. This isn't just about people, you know, this is about uh, the whole life cycle, you know, and it starts with the little, little, uh, um, insects in the water right up to you know the salmon who are the salmon feeding not only us but you know there's the bears and there's the the cougars and the you know the all the animals in this valley I can't I can't even start to name them there's so many that live off the off the salmon so it's it's uh, 
it's going to be inclusive to not only humans, but all wildlife. It's very powerful because we're all being united and it is a collaborative front, right? So this, this initiative is Indigenous led. So um, each nation, the Tanaha and the Okanagan and the Sequakmik working together and sitting at these tables um, is it's, it's just powerful. We can't do this without all five of us. The ability to practice ceremony, speak our own language is, is all but lost in our community. And I feel that salmon will be instrumental in, in uh, helping to return that. It's a powerful thing to think that, you know, one day their community will have salmon again. Of course, it's going to take a long time before the salmon come, but we're starting. Um, and at least it may be there for the ne our future generations, right? But we have to start somewhere. We need to stand up for the water. We need to stand up for our salmon. We need to stand up for our people so that we can bring the salmon back. It's for everybody. And it's for those yet unborn. It would be a great thing to bring the salmon back. It's important to my culture, especially. So if the salmon comes back, that'll be great for the people because we're salmon people.